A Brief History of Clocks, sponsored by ClocksRow.com. Clocks have been around for some 5,000 to 6,000 years. Even prior to that time, man observed the regularity of the day with the rise of the sun and eventual nightfall. The word clock is ultimately derived from the Celtic words klagen and kloka, meaning bell, implying a striking mechanism of some type, while the absence of such a mechanism has historically been associated with what is known as the timepiece. Clocks, like many things, evolved over time. The evolution produced five known categories of clocks. These were the sundial clock, the water clock, the notion of dividing the day up into different increments in order to measure time, the pendulum clock, the quartz clock, and actually a sixth category, more recently, the atomic clock. The sundial clock. A sundial is used to measure time according to the sun's position. This is one of the oldest types of clocks developed in an effort to measure time. The sun clock was developed approximately 5,500 years ago. In this clock, the sun simply casts a shadow across what is known as the style, which must be set to true north to provide a good estimate of the time. In addition, there are a number of other important parameters in the setup as well. Divisional measurement. Some 4,000 years ago, the Egyptians and the Babylonians began to divide the day into equal increments. First was the notion of 12 parts by day and 12 parts by night. Part of the basis was couched in the notion that the cultures observed that there were 12 moon cycles in a year. The second evolution of these observations rested on dividing each of the 24 parts, or hours, by 60. The number 60 is interesting and is part of the sexagismo system, which is based on the number 60. The basis for the number 60 includes a number of interesting mathematical observations and can be explored further by researching the sexagismal system. Utilizing this system allowed the Babylonians to divide each of the 24 parts into minutes and the minutes by 60 or essentially seconds. This had the effect of measuring time at a high, higher resolution. The water clock. As time progressed, evolution of the clock finally manifested itself in the form of a device. One of the first was a water clock. The water clock, or clepsydra, as it is known, was developed by the Egyptians approximately 3,400 years ago. Such clocks were also known by the Babylonians during this time period. In this case, the time is measured by the regulated flow of liquid into or out from a container, usually water. Many of these types of clocks simply allowed water to drip through a small hole at a near constant rate. Later, more sophisticated designs, including regulating water flow and pressure and connecting various mechanisms that rang bells or gongs. The water clock offered two advantages over sundials. They were more accurate, and two, not only was time measured during the day, but now an assessment of time could be made at night as well. The pendulum clock. The pendulum clock makes use of a pendulum, a swinging weight as the key feature in timekeeping. Credit for the invention in 1656 is given to Christian Huygens. Up until the 1930s, the pendulum clock was the world's most accurate timekeeper. Actually, Galileo first had the idea of using a pendulum for keeping time as early as 1637, and his son actually began to build one, but neither lived to finish it. The pendulum clock offered the world accuracy to within about 15 seconds versus 15 minutes. As a result, it became very popular. Utilizing a pendulum to keep time was essentially making use of the pendulum as the first harmonic oscillator. After the invention of the pendulum clock, it was discovered that small swings, not large, increased the accuracy of the clock. This was attributable to the higher variability in what is known as the period of the clock. Smaller swings were associated with less period variability. The quartz clock. A quartz clock is a clock that makes use of an electronic oscillator which is regulated by a quartz crystal. Quartz is essentially silicon dioxide. It was discovered that when an electronic voltage is applied to quartz, a frequency is generated via oscillation, which, as it turns out, is extremely consistent. There are a number of other factors that affect the oscillation, such as the electrode placement and shape and size of the crystal. This technology provided for tying the oscillation to digital logic counts, which then was conveniently linked to digital time display. Another important advantage crystal affords is that the frequency is virtually unchanged by the temperature. 
The first quartz crystal oscillator was built by Walter G. Cady in 1921. Consequently, since about 1970, this form of timekeeping has become the dominant one as the accuracy far exceeds the pendulum clock. The Atomic Clock Lord Kelvin is first given credit for first suggesting the use of measuring time via atomic vibration back in 1879. The first commercially available atomic clocks were built in the late 1950s. Although earlier atomic clocks were based on magnetic resonance and in some cases radioactive compounds, the modern atomic clock makes use of an atomic resonance frequency standard as the basis for keeping time. These clocks represent the most accurate known and essentially are used as the primary time standards. Atomic clocks do not make use of radioactivity today, but rather microwave signals and associated changes at the atomic level due to changes in energy levels. The most accurate atomic clocks are based on absorption spectroscopy. Atomic clocks have accuracies up to 10 to the minus 9 seconds per day or one billionth of a second. Pictured here is NIST-F1, the nation's primary time and frequency standard clock, a cesium fountain-based atomic clock located in Boulder, Colorado. This clock represents the official world time and has an uncertainty of about 5 times 10 to the minus 16, which simply means it would neither gain nor lose a second in more than 60 million years. We hope you enjoyed the video.